Hello everyone, and welcome to my channel, and today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Risley. Risley has known about your crush on him. That's all just perks of being a very perceptive person, and knowing what people want most of the time. It was not like you were being exactly subtle as well. You were very obvious, with the way that you would blush whenever he got near. And the way that you would talk to your friend, sometimes not so quietly about him. And although he acted like he didn't hear you, he did. He was no idiot. And he was not deaf either. And that's why, since you observed how cute you were, and how the two of you had had an actual relationship, even just as friends, he also knew that he had feelings for you. And although he wasn't sure about coming forward with those feelings, he was more sure now that he had gathered all this evidence that most likely you would not be rejecting him. He was not one to make uncalculated steps. At least he wanted to be a little bit sure. Although there was always a possibility that you would reject him, it was low. And it felt safe to start planning a confession. And so... Having asked for Sage Wayne's advice, he had a plan. It was a simple sort, and all he needed was just something like a gift. He was really torn on what to choose, but he went to something neutral. Flowers and some desserts. He had went over to your door and knocked. When you came out to find the Duke himself standing outside of your home, you blushed. How wouldn't you? Oh, wisely, what brought you here? Is everything alright? Well, of course. Consider this a personal matter. So, uh, I... I thought I want to take you out on a date. That's all. He said. He felt a little bit awkward. And he was sure if Clarine were there... She would be laughing at him, but he was quite glad that she was not. Instead, he presented you as a gift, smelling confidently. So, I assume I'll be taking you out at seven? You blushed, raising in place, and you felt like your heart was about to jump out of your chest before he nodded. Yes, seven. I will be waiting then. Of course, darling. And that's how it ended up with you standing outside of your door. It's 6.50. And wisely. Well, he came right on time. And he took you. The hotel booth the day. And the two of you ate there. While Risley was trying his best to not make heart eyes at you. He wanted to keep up the cool persona for a little bit. But as he walked you home, he couldn't help but wrap her arm around your waist and pull you close, kissing your cheek sweetly. I'll be waiting for you tomorrow. Where? At work, of course. He chuckled, seeing how you blushed. He would still like to tease you, no matter how close to you were. He liked making you a mess. Whether it be you by flirting, or just by teasing you like this, your reactions were always priceless to him. But he would be waiting for you, even if it was just the two of you working together. Seeing you would always brighten up his day nonetheless. Navilet. Navilet would find it difficult to get the hint that you have a crush on him. It would take him a while. A long while. That doesn't mean he's not trying to understand. It's simply that it did not cross his mind. So, it's not like he had any frame of reference for the situation. He's never had someone so bold as to actually try to get close to him while having a crush on him. And he's never had feelings for anyone. So, to be in this kind of situation... And to know what to do as well, 
it was difficult. But who decided to spare you the agony of having this crush and confess his own? After all, what he was having as well could be called a crush, couldn't it? That's what he knew. After sitting down with some millicents, and they told him their advice. After all, there were beings that had shared some difficulties with him. They were similar in a way, and it always brought him comfort to talk to them and ask them for advice or their thoughts on a topic, especially Sidin or Sidreen, because they were rather skilled at this. And he liked hearing their advice. And after he was done asking the questions, they had all suggested different ways for him to actually confess. And he ended up doing something relatively simple. He decided to tell you straight away. After all, trying to hide or just do all this kind of things that he was not really a fan of and were rather more human than his kind of attempts. He had no idea what to do, but he knew that he certainly could not keep hiding things from you, and you could not wait to confess either, or play any sort of games. So he had just gone over to you, and decided to tell you what he was feeling. Why on? My feelings for you have been rather intense for a while now. I have found great difficulty in coming to light with those feelings. But I feel as though I have no other choice. Especially since you deserve to know as well. So, I... I hope you do not mind my feelings. And if anything, I hope that you can accept this. He said, as he gave you a rose, It is a token of my love, and if you happen to reject me, then it's fine to keep it as well. He said, He looked rather stable, but deep inside of him, he was a bundle of nerves. But all of that settled once you smiled, pulling him into a hug. Ah, oh, Nivellet, of course I love you. I've loved you for so long already. You have no idea. Well, he did have an idea. And even though he did have one, he was still so nervous as to how to proceed. So he's glad that he did. Because even then, it took him a great deal of courage to tell you what he was truly feeling and to be able to share his love with you like this. But he was more than happy about doing it now.